Hello everybody, my name is Manan. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a guest with me here, Steven. Uh, Steven Kosorotov is, uh, is an Estonian-Russian. He was born and raised in Estonia. He was actually born in 95, so he actually saw the rapid development of Estonia into this great IT hub as well. Uh, he's really interested in cultural aspects of uh, different cultures. He has also lived abroad in Germany. And uh, today we are going to talk about the different cultures that we have here in Estonia, the challenges that we face, and somehow, and also a little bit of the misconceptions and ideas that people might have about Estonian Russians or Russian Estonians. And uh, I think uh, we can begin by welcoming you, Stephen. So, Stephen, thank you for coming. It's great having you. Hello. Mm -hmm. So, um, Let's first begin by you introducing what you're doing right now. So oh, yeah, as Manuel has already mentioned, my name is Steven. Uh, I currently work as an engineer here in Estonia. Uh, I just finished uh, my master's degree in Caltech this year. So I hope I'll have some, some future in engineering here. Uh, and also maybe also one of the topics that we could discuss today that uh, some Companies, especially bigger companies, uh, grow quite fast and require a lot of engineers and all specialists in uh, different areas, uh, which we don't have in those numbers in Estonia. And so I see also increasing number of foreigners in this company. So I should actually uh, more and more uh, communicate with foreigners for like every day. Uh, the main uh, language of communication in my company is English. So this topic is also interesting for me to maybe introduce myself, but also to understand uh, understand the other side, the side of the people who are coming, who are willing to work, who are willing to contribute, and how to to define those those communication between those two groups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a very important thing, because uh, I know that in Estonia there are lots of foreigners who are in the tech field, but I'm guessing you are an engineer who is more in the hardware side as well. If I'm not wrong, yeah. So I think this is still an industry that is not so let's say booming in Estonia, uh, still the tech side is a lot heavier. So I really hope that when we have more startups and established companies, like, uh, there are quite a few actually, uh, you know, like Ericsson, uh, Stone Ridge, my old company as well. And then um, Comodule and these companies that are coming up. I hope that there is more emphasis on hardware, like actual uh, product engineering and this as well. So. Um, okay, so let's first talk by you introducing your growing up. So how was growing up in Estonia in 95? And uh, what were the challenges that you faced? Uh, let's talk about that. Well, yeah, uh, 95 is the middle of the 90s. Uh, it's uh, Estonia just gave its independence. Uh, independence uh, and my Russian speaking pa uh, parents will actually stay here because I also have some Estonian blood in me. Uh, so I got the Estonian citizenship uh, when, when I was born uh, because I have some some uh, relatives and, uh, and fathers of mine who were Estonian citizens during the uh, 20s and 30s. Uh, so that's kind of the setup. Uh, everything was really unset. Uh, so there was this rigid rule of the Soviet times, and then everything collapsed, uh, and there were no rules at all, uh, and people were trying to build something new uh, during this time. So it's, uh, I would say, time of big hopes, but also time of a lot of people uh, really trying to change the system to profit them. So, of course, corruption, uh, everything uh, like that, uh, some low-level crime, uh, being not really able to go outside in the evening with small child. Uh, yeah, usually probably also as, as a woman, uh, especially living in Mostama, where, where I live still, uh, being one of those Russian ghettos uh, where a lot of trafficking and all that kind of stuff happened. Uh, it was quite interesting, but of course, as a small child, I haven't seen like a lot myself uh, because I was guarded by my parents. Uh, actually, they were like, middle class uh, people at this point, so I haven't seen the worst. I heard the stories and I really remember my mother talking or emphasizing that I shouldn't work alone, 
uh, when I, at the beginning of the twenties, when I started going to school that I shouldn't take my phone uh, out in, in the streets because it is, it's dangerous. Somebody will come and kick you that if you leave the car, uh, you should put all of those small belongings in some place that nobody sees it because otherwise thieves will see some, something, some backpack light on the seat of the car and they will, uh, break down the, the window and take that one. Uh, so I remember kind of, I haven't seen a lot myself, but I remember this kind of sort of low level fear, uh, and maybe not, uh, being completely sure what will happen in the future. So there were quite a lot of hopes. Uh, but people were not sure if uh, it uh, will be happening, some, something good will be happening. And also I remember this feeling growing up that being this poor guy, so more or less that uh, you looked at the West, you looked at the, the US, you looked at the Western Europe, and those guys could afford everything. Uh, and you felt yourself something lesser. Also being of a really small country, we I get, I get, at least myself, I've got this feeling that nobody can knows and cares about you. Uh, so that's kind of been the assumption for the most of my life that if I go to somewhere and then say uh, that I'm from Estonia, uh, that nobody, that nobody will actually know anything about it. So I need to introduce the whole country. And also maybe that's a little bit of a pressure I'm putting on myself because, uh, you are more or less the face of the whole country if you're, if you're abroad. Uh, so those were the nineties and beginning of the thousands. Uh, in 2004, uh, the Estonia became a NATO member and EU member. Uh, so, of course, to be uh, to be able to become a EU member and NATO member, we have to have started introducing some policies before already. So, kind of, uh, I think was not so bad as in the 90s, obviously. Uh, but still, I think those are quite big milestones. Uh, people. Like if you talk about this fraction of like fear and a uh, fraction of hope, uh, that's maybe when the hope finally won. So the people understood that actually we are a part of this something bigger. Of course, still we thought ourselves as like lesser partners uh, in, in this big European family and the NATO family. And of course, NATO kind of also gave us understanding that maybe tomorrow Estonia still will be a country uh, because you still had this feeling that uh, we actually got independence uh, for quite a small period of time in, in the history and uh, between those independences we also got wars and being part of some other country. So you could get some certainty about the future because you get this like more maybe security stuff which is which is being covered by the NATO and you get this economical stuff which is covered by the EU. So actually from there on the path was more or less set. So the trouble so to say was uh, were, were really uh, down there. and. There actually, as every every young person I went to school, uh, we had a lot of English. Uh, I guess previous generation had it as well. I guess Estonians really in the 90s already had this clear vision that English is important. Uh, but I also kind of figured it out that it's not the case in many other places in, in the world, uh, that so much emphasis is put on English, which is not even comparable with Russian or Estonian. That's completely separate language. Uh, so I've saw this growth and development step by step, uh, at some point I started traveling a lot because the, there were no borders literally in, in the EU. That was also kind of a new thing for us, uh, that you can just sit on a car and drive to, uh, to Berlin, to, to Prague. We have done it a couple of times with my father. I also like saw, uh, my father was a quite an old uh, person at this point already. My mother as well. I have an older parents. Uh, and they had this kind of the fire their eyes for, because like it was, it was closed for such a long time. My father recalls talking about Helsinki being 70 kilometers uh, away from Tallinn and Vladivostok being, uh, thousands of kilometers away on the east. Uh, but the first one was not approachable. So he didn't have any kind of imagination that it ever could go there. And the other was somewhat approachable. So if you kind of really want to go to Vladivostok, it will find a, find a way to go there, but with Helsinki was not. So my parents were really, really into that. So they all through the world, but older, they were really living maybe the part of their younger years, uh, during, during this time, uh, traveling a lot and also kind of showing to us Estonia itself, but also going with the car to Europe, uh, was a huge thing, uh, and was really interesting for me as well, because I've kind of learned that, uh, yeah, 
the world the world doesn't stop uh, on the border of a country usually uh, it's it's maybe a reason that uh, Estonians are currently co really hyper connected I heard actually that uh, uh, that that uh, a lot of maybe startups in Estonia actually succeed uh, because they have this mindset that uh, you're not trying to first of all grow in one country you start expanding to more countries directly because we know that Estonia is so small that doesn't make any sense to uh, produce a product or a service in one country. So that's kind of the, the idea that you got. You, you could travel and the people will help together for quite a long time. So if you could travel, uh, everyone started doing this. Um, uh, I would like to ask you about uh, the school time. So did you study in a Russian language school? Yes. Well, uh, maybe you should maybe even go back a little bit. Uh, when I went to the kindergarten, I went here in Lasnava. Uh, so most of the kindergartens were Russian speaking, obviously. Uh, but there was this notion in my parents that Estonian is probably an important language. So they, not maybe as all of the Russian parents, uh, my parents as well have already took like Estonian state as a serious thing uh, back then in the beginning in the nineties and the beginning of two thousands. So I went to the kindergarten where I learned Estonian, but still the main language was Russian. So we had the Estonian lessons, uh, basically for four or five year olds. And then I went to Russian school, uh, quite good Russian school, I would say, but still, still it was a Russian school. Uh, and I encountered a lot of people who maybe had the parents raised and interpret, uh, differently. Uh, so a lot of people who haven't really seen Estonia as a thing, so they have really seen themselves as a Russian. So for I felt myself as, 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 as an Estonian uh, during my whole life, and I had some identity crisis, especially when I was when I was uh, outside of Estonia. So uh, that's 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 how it went. Uh, Russian school, uh, people from different backgrounds. As I said, I was more of a middle uh, kind of income family. Uh, there were also poor people there, uh, maybe a couple of rich people, and really different kind of attitudes to life. As in general, as in school, you go to school, so for, first of all, you have your friends, you have your, your family, really small number of people, and then you see everyone else. So that's maybe when I really got exposed to this Russian-speaking uh, part of Estonia, like on, 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 a, on a grand scale, that I understood that the assumptions that I had that, well, Estonia is a real thing, and uh, I really like this country, and I proud of being from this country and I want to kind of live in this country, contribute to the society that was not uh, in each person's uh, brain, more or less. There were a lot of people who really kind of used Estonia or seen Estonia as, okay, good, now, now we're in the EU, so I can get this EU passport and just go away. Uh, they're like, uh, first option, so they just used it to finish the school uh, and go away. Other people were really, really kind of pro-Russian, so they were looking more and more to the east. Uh, and although they haven't left Estonia usually because it's much more economically profitable, a lot of them were still kind of in this this, this Russian-speaking bubble. Uh, and that actually felt really weird, uh, but it felt also even a little bit painful because it felt uh, how separated actually the Estonian-speaking and Russian-speaking societies are. When I had an option to talk to Estonians, actually seen that we are quite similar. Like uh, Ru Russian-speaking people who grew up in Estonia have more or less the same understanding of the world as the Estonian people who grew up in Estonia. Uh, but for some reason, this this uh, language was the main barrier. Uh, a lot of uh, my Russian-speaking friends from the school uh, communicate or still communi communicated or still communicate with the Estonians mainly in English because it's easier for them than, than really using Estonian. So because of this barrier, you can create those two separate uh, separate worlds. Russian-speaking world with uh, schools being in Russian, some workplaces being in Russian, uh, families talking in Russian, family friends also being Russian, Russian-speaking media, television, uh, outlets, going to sports, uh, kind of places where you do sports and speak Russian. Uh, where you go to the shop in Lostama or Mustama, you speak Russian and so on. So really, you, you could see this bubble from the inside. And yeah. yeah. Um, 
I think the like for me one of the things that I realized uh, can you uh, I think there is an echo happening that I can hear back. Okay. I should I do something? Uh, okay. Let me just be. Let me go. Oh, I can maybe reduce the, this door or the sound from the speakers. Try talking now. Uh, yeah, no, it's a lot better. You can hear me okay, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the things that I also saw when I came to Estonia was also this uh, these bubbles. Uh, I, I think this this is like the biggest bubble there is and it's very like universally accepted in Estonia as well that there is a Russian parallel stream going on and there is an Estonian parallel stream going on because I saw in every aspect of living life in Estonia there are these two these two aspects like for example you go there are beaches where majority people that go are Russian speaking there are beaches that majority people who are Estonian there are um, I don't know, like uh, clubs, bars, where majority are so, uh, Estonian speaking, and there are majority where there are uh, Russian speaking. And then I think this goes on to every aspect of life here in um, in Estonia that I have seen. And one of the problems that I saw when I came as a foreigner here is that uh, more more bubbles were being created because uh, not necessarily Russian and Estonian. But for example, one of the things that I saw was that also happened was that the startups that started to gather a lot of foreigners, for example, at that time in 2014, it was TransferWise, a lot of people were coming and it sort of became like it, its own bubble as well. So the Estonians and Russians that were in the TransferWise, they became together with the, with the foreigners and so somehow foreigners got more comfortable there because I know I've, I, was, I was in touch with quite a few of them at that time. Mm -hmm. and I've been a part of a few of those those gatherings as well. And this is something that I saw that was like a that was not a reality that was that 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 was that was happening in um, that was true to Estonia. Like you are not like if you meet an Estonian person in TransferWise at that time, you don't necessarily they are not like sort of like the average Estonian person that you meet because those are like a hyper uh, uh, educated foreign uh, people who have visited abroad and th that creates a very skewed interpretation of what uh -huh. uh, who the people are. So that is something that I saw at that time, but I'm guess it's, it's changing as well. So that was like my, that was where, when I first saw this idea of like, uh, I like bubbles, but I think I want to jump onto this, this very, I think this more important topic of this, that, like what are because i get in touch because for me like estonians are there is this like constant reminder and fear in their head of this uh the for, for example this occupation that they had and i think for some part of their mind it is still there is this fear in their head when they see you know like russian uh language and russian uh you know culture, I, I don't know what better way to say that, being in Estonia as well. And mm -hmm. I think that that is, uh, I, I don't know how justified that is. Uh, it's their history, it's their own um, interpretation of that. But I, because in majority of the discussions or arguments that I have, this, this argument of that, this, this Russian who doesn't uh, take initiative to speak Estonian after being born here and living here always comes up uh, all sure. the time. This, this comes up. So it, so what, and you, from what I have known about you, like you seem like a person who has, or your parents and your family have deliberately and consciously tried to make sure that you are an Estonian and Estonian citizen, but you were still part of this Russian Estonian culture and so so what do you think is the problem here are estonians justified in thinking that uh we have a big problem with integration and this is wrong or whose responsibility is it exactly is it should estonians be more open or should should russian estonians be more 
I don't know, uh, accommodating. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for for a great reference. Actually, there are a lot of references uh, about the bubbles. Maybe we can we can discuss later on when we talk about today because I also see, uh, as I call it, maybe foreigner bubble. Uh, I also see it at work. Uh, we have Russian speaking bubble, we have Estonian speaking bubble, and then you have foreigner bubble, which are formulate like their own bubble. So there are like Indians, Pakistani people, maybe some like single foreigners from other countries, uh, and they're all all together but they are not communicated by other groups. So they're kind of this whole bubble, a whole new bubble. Uh, but going back to this Russian Estonian and where the problem came from, I understand that, yeah, that's also maybe why I feel kind of uh, a little bit more informed about talking about this topic, because I also have a lot of kind of Estonian friends. I communicate in Estonian quite freely as well. Uh, so I have this this idea as well. So I also kind of was always pro this country. So I like this country. So I got I get the messages from both sides. Uh, and obviously people try to blame the other side usually. But my personal experience uh, comes down to language. People really don't care about your uh, family name if you speak the language. There are all there are more and more people currently in Estonia who speak the language. Uh, but have the Russian uh, Russian name and being fully accepted in Estonia. Uh, actually, really kind of salute this thing. Uh, and even uh, people who speak the language with an accent, uh, maybe you know this this guy, what was his name, from the uh, from the Vizminos, from this five minus uh, group, uh, is actually called Russian uh, Game Boy Tetris. Yeah, and he had a song with Noblo, so he actually has an accent and he speaks in Estonia. But he has quite a, quite catchy songs, and everyone listens to them. And Estonians also listen to them. So I find it to be the question of language mainly. Uh, and uh, in for my perspective, obviously uh, uh, there should be steps from both sides. So Estonians uh, need to accept people who speak with accent. Some of them still don't. Some of them still view this language as something holy, and I fully get it. But uh, otherwise, if you don't encourage people speaking with the accent, they won't start speaking at all. And obviously, from from Russian side, I don't see any other options than choosing one language of communication uh, that should be Estonia. Because if uh, we look at the yeah school system that we have currently, we are going to the full Estonian school system, but unfortunately, we need a little more uh, for that to happen. Uh, I think that should have happened a long time ago because that's what maintained those bubbles for those 25, 30 years since the independence. Because, yeah, old people are old people, but uh, people who grew up during this time are still in bubbles uh, mainly because of the school system. Mm -hmm. So having one school system, Estonian one, uh, and uh, giving that as a main language of communication in this country uh, could be the only, the only solution. And obviously we should aim at the younger people uh, I see in younger generation that there is more and more openness uh, for uh, kind of you pro-European and also pro-Estonian views. Uh, and also, once again, it's really awful to say, but uh, I see that with war, it actually goes better in that sense because people see how crazy can this like really hardcore pro-Russian side get. Uh, and that's kind of chosen apart from that. And it makes a lot of people ask the question, who I am? Am I actually Russian or am I Estonian? Uh, and more and more people answer to this question more Estonian. Mm -hmm. So I identify myself in Estonian as, as in, in this sense. I have Russian as a mother tongue. I can, that's a fact. I can't uh, change anything with that. Uh, but uh, usually if I've been asked somewhere outside in Europe, in, in the US, what am I don't have, I don't hesitate anymore. I hesitated for my whole life, but I don't hesitate anymore to say I'm Estonian. I'm not Russian. Um, I, th I think I want to dig into this topic of like this as what do you think is the argument in the in people's head who are Russian Estonian that does not make them want to learn Estonian or become a part of the Estonian culture or this mainstream? Is uh -huh. it just uh, comfort like they can get everything they need? Uh, from this uh, from the system because the system I mean if you know Russian then you can get along pretty well in Estonia. It's sure. uh, what what is the argument? What is the justification for them? And I, I I I know I understand that the justification has to make sense for them. It's not just a case of you know I don't want to learn the language. Sure, sure. Uh, 
people, of course, for for each uh, for each kind of step in your life, you usually find justification. That's the usual thing that we do. Sometimes we are we are just yeah we're just lazy, but then we find the thing that actually I need to preserve energy for tomorrow because of X, Y, and Z. So that's that's usual, and uh, for each thing, like our brain is really logical, so we want to find the justification for everything that we do. Uh, but for what I heard, obviously, for more for an older generation, the answer is like I feel myself as Russian. Uh, I don't. I just happen to live here. Uh, I don't really care. Uh, I'm. I was part. This is like I was proud of citizen of the Soviet Union, and then I just lived in the part of the Soviet Union. Uh, Soviet Union. It happened to break up, so I ended up here. Uh, but I I uh, don't identify myself with everything which happened to, happened around me for the last thirty years, which is quite weird. But uh, this this comment could be heard a lot from the older generation, and obviously for an older generation, that's understandable, fully understandable. It's really hard to learn a language. If you're 60, 70, it's really hard to learn something. Yeah, yeah. That, that that I understand. But the, so by, by this argument, you it's it sort of seems like people have an identity still attached to the old Soviet Union. It doesn't necessarily have to relate to, you know, where, where, where Estonia is. But on the other hand, these are the type of people that I feel are, let's say, getting low in number because obviously it's already been like more than 30 years since Soviet Union and everything disintegrated. And there has been quite a lot of people who were born in Estonia um, in the, the Russian speaking families as well. So what is the thinking in their head like? You were not born in the Soviet Union. You didn't see Soviet Union. You just saw growing up Russian, your your family speaking Russian. What is the the argument in their head? Or are these even youngsters who don't speak Estonian because sure. they feel attached? Sure. Yeah, I just wanted to start with this group because that's kind of the initial group. Uh, and uh, it was the biggest group in the 90s, obviously. Uh, and I guess... For, with them, it's uh, it's the hardest to kind of explain something to, to reach to them in some sense that, yeah, we should build bridges and uh, not burn them. So, but yeah, that's well, also maybe sadly, but life it's taken its, its place. So younger people appear, older people disappear. Uh, so this group is, is growing smaller and smaller. And actually I would contribute uh, the positive changes in the last 30 years, mainly for arriving of, of, of younger people who are a little bit or, more open-minded and with them, uh, one of the most, uh, kind of the biggest uh, uh, arguments is usually, I'm just using Estonia once again to just escape, to just have this passport, finish the school, uh, and then jump to the Europe. So I'm, I'm learning English, I'm fully in English. Uh, I, I mean, Russian is my mother tongue, but I don't care about Estonia, that's a small, useless country. Uh, I'll take my pass, I'll go to Germany, everyone will want me, I go to England, okay. It's not the case anymore, but it was fear of the Brexit uh, and like kind of this worldwide view directly. And so I don't want to spend time learning Kassonian because I will be away uh, when, when I have that option. And a lot of people uh, end up not using this option or not being able to use this option. And other people grow disillusioned with uh, maybe foreign countries because they actually liked it here, but they didn't understand it. Previously, but they didn't have anything to compare, uh, and then they come back, and yeah, that's that's where we end up with people who are perfect well uh, in speaking English, uh, but can't really really talk in Estonian with Estonians. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so um, global kind of understanding of the world and not being maybe keen to for one particular country. Uh, you mentioned that you had an identity crisis when you moved abroad, and you mentioned it in the drive you said that you lived in uh -huh. Germany as well. What was that about? Can you tell that story before, during and after? Well, once again, uh, when I was growing up, obviously, uh, when I was small, when I was a child, when pre to school, uh, I had people who had a quite similar uh, worldview to me. And of course, my worldview was not really complicated back then because I was a child. And then in the school, I understood that there, well, Russian speaking bubble, there's Estonian speaking bubble, and it's really hard to connect. Uh, and I didn't have any you know, long lasting relationship or friendships with uh, any of Estonian speaking people. I encountered them, I could speak to them. Obviously, we could do some projects together, some cool projects, whatever, but they ended up there. Uh, so it was 
quite painful already, and then you start to ask yourself, why am I not, like a Russian who happens to live in Estonia? Am I Estonian as a Russian as a mother tongue? How do I define myself? And then you go to the other country. Uh, so I went to Germany uh, and I really wanted to learn the language, really wanted to learn the culture. So the first day I went there, I was like, okay, I'm not speaking Russian at all. With Estonia, it's not kind of complicated because it's really hard to find someone speaking Estonia. So there, I don't, didn't need to do any conscious decisions. But with Russian, I just said, no, uh, I'm not kind of actively seeking Russian speaking community just to stop myself from speaking only Russian and kind of force myself into integrating myself in German society. So I had this view that I don't want to be seen by the Germans as a foreigner. Uh, so I want to see you more or less as German, uh, fake it till I make it more or less. With four, four years, I more or less kind of acquired uh, a German knowledge needed for them not to understand maybe half an hour or an hour that I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a foreigner, uh, I'm not a German. I think I'm more or less okay with the pronunciation, so that helps. Of course, grammar was crappy, but yeah, with, when people talk at the parties, the grammar is usually crappy. Uh, so yeah, and I understood that I can want to present myself as a German. At the same time, I have this identity crisis back there, which is like Russian Estonian, and I really got confused. I really, for some, like, I could literally like be in bed in the evening and think about it and who I am and what should I do and what's the next step. And it really bothered me. <laughs> I talked with the people, a lot of people, I asked this question, like, how do you feel? And like, okay, I feel German or I feel Estonian or I feel whatever. And they're completely chilled with that. They're like, okay, I, I, I have my identity set and I don't care about it anymore. And then I had, for instance, friend from, from Ukraine, actually, uh, she was my girlfriend for, for some time. And she had Armenian background. Uh, then she actually grew up in Russian speaking city, but she felt Ukrainian. So she kind of could understand it really well. I think that's, that's where we sort of started communicating on, on, on that topic. So it struck me that people who don't have those problems, don't care about it at all. They, for, for them, it's just a sad thing. And me, yeah, that was driving me crazy. So I've decided that by removing this third level, so the German level, I actually can make my life much easier. So just going back to this Russian versus Estonian and not adding faking to be German uh, at the same time. I still like Germany. I still like speaking German, uh, but yeah, I like it here more, I would say. And also I have my identity crisis, at least this third dimension to my identity crisis solved by coming back to Estonia, having like day-to-day -day options to talk in Estonian, because that also kind of hurt me a lot. But I feel myself like Estonian, but I don't talk in Estonian at all. Because you don't have anyone to talk in Estonian around you. You have only Germans, you have some Turks, Kurds, Russian speakers, Arabs, whatever. Like you got everyone, but you don't have really like Estonians there. You have maybe a couple, but it's really hard to find. Uh, and I felt myself literally you know, separated from this culture. And then also things happened here. Some, you know, you, you don't need to have a huge news to, to be the main news in Estonia, like, uh, kitten jumped from the, from the tree. That's the main, main news in posthumous the next day. So you can uh, listen to this thing. You're going to live in this culture, you live in this country. So you kind of get this, this influx of culture all the time. And then I was completely separated. I didn't spoke the language and I felt myself really lost. So my attempt going back to Estonia was actually trying to, first of all, make the, the whole situation a little bit easier and then also to reconnect with the Estonian part so I could actually say that I know what happens in Estonia, I feel Estonian because I understand what's what's happening around me. Uh, I know what life Estonian leaves because I have a lot of Estonian friends now. I was to the military, so that's a good bonding topic with a lot of Estonian men because they were to the military, so they have all of those jokes about uh, going uh, and like living in the winter and in, in the forest and whatever. So yeah, now I feel myself much more connected to, to, to Estonia. That's that's how I solved it. And I think it uh, was uh, provoked by, first of all, adding this additional German layer and also not being able to connect myself to the Estonian culture for those four years in, in Germany. Was there any particular moment where you knew that you have uh, reconciled this identity crisis between 
Russian and Estonian. Was there a particular moment or a story or a time where you realized that, okay, this is not, I, this is not, I, well, this is not a problem for me anymore that I have understood this. I have accepted this and uh, I am ready to go forward. Uh, was there a time like that, a particular instance of time? I think that's more of a process and I haven't finished yet. I am in much better shape than I was three, four years ago. Uh, but there's, there's milestones. So you can have some topic that is common with everyone else around you. That's actually like why it was so hard for me to, to leave outside because I didn't have the topic, which is common, like with everyone around me, because I didn't went to German school. So I didn't know any jokes about French language that they learned and so on. Uh, I didn't know like films and culture. So going back here, like huge milestones were of course going to the, to the military, uh, going to work and communicating with students day by day, like every day. Uh, and also going to the university and actually communicating with university people people there as well. Through actually, I, I've studied the English, but I used every option to kind of connect to the Estonian speaking people as well, to, to, I don't know, discuss everything. I learned like a lot of new words. Uh, one, like also conscious decision is I make all of my notes in Estonian, uh, and other conscious decision I've started learning, like investing, investment, all of related to that. Also, I just didn't do anything. So I said, okay, I may just start learning that the whole thing in Estonian. So now I know all the words in Estonian, which are like related to the, to the investments and, and stocks and bonds or whatever, but I did not know those so well in English and I don't know those so well in Russian, but it's actually my main language of communicating with those, those topics. So I guess that that's how it went, like step-by-step -step conscious decision to, uh, open myself more to Estonian and maybe choose this, this language and this option, language option or, or other options. But but uh, you are like uh, let, let let's say an example who is consciously trying to become a part and uh, integrate and understand that you are that that you want to be um, like the core part of this country, right? But on the other hand, there are I'm guessing there are many many people uh, who are not so motivated as you are, or who are just a little bit comfortable. Do you think there are challenges when, for example, somebody like you uh, wants to become more integrated uh, into the Estonian culture, somebody coming from Russian Estonian? One example that you already, one good example that you already mentioned is this this accent issue, and I, 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 I really feel that is that is so stupid because everybody has an accent. Even sure. if you're, you're, you're you're Russian, you, you have an accent. If you're born native speaking English, you have an accent. There is no way that nobody uh, has an accent. But say somebody wants to do what you did, mm -hmm. what are the challenges that stop them from doing that? It's actually really similar, I would guess, uh, for the challenges that you'll get as a foreigner, because like more or less, if we talk about those bubbles, once again, as I said, I see this as being three bubbles because in my company, where I work big Russian speaking bubble, Estonian speaking bubble and foreigner bubble. And what you're asking is basically how to get from one bubble to another bubble. Uh, and the challenges are in that sense, quite similar, I guess, uh, as you mentioned, in all of your videos, Estonians are quite close people. Like. First of all, at the beginning, they don't let you in a lot. I uh, actually, that's the, the stupidest part, like to be accepted, you need to be able to make some jokes, to know some, some background, and then they connect with you as an army was a good, good thing because that kind of provided this, this topic to, to those jokes. And then you, you kind of break the size with those things that can connect with them. And then it's much, much easier. Uh, but if you don't have those backgrounds and Russian speaking students don't have those backgrounds either, and foreigners as well. It's really hard. We talk about generic topics. I talk about projects, talk about work, and then work ends, project ends, and you have nothing more to talk about. So you just well, like you go and uh, go go separately. Uh, and I guess that's the biggest challenge to kind of start uh, start because if you started already, uh, the progress will, will will go. You will your Estonian friends will show you more Estonian friends. You have more Estonian to speak with, and then and then it will go better and better. But the beginning is, is, is the hardest. 
Finding but uh, yeah. I, I think I, I wanted to the interject and ask this very, because my impression is that becoming a part, like a foreigner like me who comes from Pakistan or India or Bangladesh does not have a history with Estonia. Like mm -hmm. when they think of Pakistan, they don't have like an immediate connection. But when they think of Russian speaking Estonians, they immediately, I mean, natural reaction is that, of course, we were part of the Soviet Union and they were like our occup occupying us for such a long time. What I'm trying to understand is, do you think it is difficult for a Russian speaking person to become more culturally acceptable in Estonia as compared to, for example, a foreigner who, who learns the language? Or do you feel that the problem is not there anymore with, with, the, with the younger generation? Yes, the understanding of the world that you would just described uh, was also m mostly under guys or people, girls and guys, and, and uh, all of the people who remember the Soviet times, because they have the trauma, obviously. Uh, they remember remember how bad it was, and they kind of connect the easy things that, you know, that bad people doing bad things, and they speak Russian, so they connect Russian with the bad people who do bad things. Uh, but I guess it's not the case and with my generation, at least I'm 28 right now. So I'm kind of people who are starting, uh, starting in the, or like growing in the work and like approaching, uh, the work the most. So I guess this problem is not there anymore. Uh, each time I actually kind of broke the, broke the eyes and started speaking to Estonians, I felt that I'm accepted if I can speak the language, if I know the background. So like there are no issues with uh, me being. Uh, Russian speaker, uh, if I could communicate fully, if I could, uh, say, make a joke, so that's usually kind of the, the highest level you can get, because it implies you understand the culture, you understand the background. If you can do that, you will be accepted. And I guess that's the same for foreigners. Uh, but the only thing uh, with foreigners, I guess, Estonians are uh, somewhat uh, acceptable of uh, using English as the main language, uh, and uh, with Russians, it's not the case, obviously. With Russians, they assume that you should speak Estonian. If you do, that's fine. If you don't, well, bad luck. But do you think it's the same sentiment in the younger generation as well, or is it different? Or they're more comfortable with English? They are more comfortable, but you don't uh, you don't get those bounds. So you, you're still, once again, you're perfectly able to have a Russian speaker and Estonian speaker communicate in English to finish work project. No conflicts. People will finish, but then at five o'clock, you know, the, the pen falls uh, and that's it. One goes to its own bubble and the other goes to its own bubble. So that's, there is no uh, connection of bubbles, so to say, or connection of yeah, the space of the discussion. If you, uh, if you use English as this main language, that's, that's why. Uh, I, 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 uh, I, I think that's uh, one of the interesting topic uh, that I have, or I have seen so far is that the difference in cultures between Estonian general culture and then uh, the Russian speaking culture or the, the Russian language speaking people culture as well. Apart from the language, do you see any differences in both of these cultures? And do you see any similarities? Actually, once again, that's really good that they've had this experience to live abroad. All through it went to be a lot of like a mental pain about who I am and why I am and what should I do next. Uh, this gaining this perspective, looking at a lot of different people with completely different cultures, and understood that if we're talking about younger generation, I'm mainly talking about people my age, uh, the understanding of the world, the understanding of your place in the world, the aspirations are really similar between Russian speakers uh, in Estonia and Estonian speakers in Estonia. I do see a huge difference when I talk to the people from, uh, from Russia, from actual people to Russia. I can spot like almost in two sentences that they're not born here, that they speak even differently and they also can emphasize different things. It's something humiliating maybe, not humiliating, but, but humble, really humble if you grow up in a, in a small country. You kind of get this, this feeling that the world doesn't care about you and that's okay. You shouldn't change the world. You should change, just make it a little bit better. Maybe change everything around you to kind of start, start, start small. In the bigger countries, people uh, usually start thinking directly with uh, 
okay, let's let's change the world first. I know there's a trash on my on my street, but let's change the world first, and then we'll we'll go go to the trash. And Estonia is vice versa. And actually, people who grew up here also have this mentality, and all, almost all of them are pretty pro-European. Once again, there are just two fractions. One of them uses this sentiment to just kind of go go away to Europe, to US, whatever, and the other is just uses the same sentiment basically to, to get integrated in Estonian society because they view Estonia as also part of the Europe. But I see that the changes are quite small in, in the current generation. Yeah, even mm -hmm. media, so one good thing that has been done, uh, I guess roughly six or eight years ago, was creating the Estonian television in uh, Russian. So previously, the main source of the news for all of the Russian-speaking people uh, on the TV, but also in the internet, was uh, mainly Russian channels, uh, which were bombarded with the propaganda from from the war in Georgia, of course, for Crimea, and now it's just ridiculous. Now it's just banned. Uh, but we have uh, Russian-speaking sources, which doesn't solve the issue of the language, but they solve the issue of the mentality. So I don't see that there is a huge difference uh, on how the people view the world. Estonians and Russian. The Russians have accepted, Russian speaking people have accepted all of the kind of Estonian uh, celebrations that we have. Everyone was like kind of really okay. Younger people are really okay, like waving Estonian flag on uh, on uh, Independence Day. Everyone kind of prepares themselves for uh, Yanibak now. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, we should go somewhere to nature. And there, there's the kind of no real difference between people want to go to nature or Yanibak, people want to have a beer, some, some meat, and see some fire. A bonfire, uh, and I guess that's throughout the whole thing. And the topics are more or less discussed are the same. Maybe Ukraine is a little bit more polarizing, but I would say it's also polarizing more towards the end of the older generation. So I see that difference is really small. Or it's not small; it's going smaller and smaller each, each year. So I see it's, it's, it's a quite beneficial thing. And also, if you must myself as a rule, maybe uh, as, as a person who is slightly between those two worlds uh, to trying to, to actually bring those two worlds together. So sometimes I just put some Estonian rap to my Russian speaking friends and they're like, oh, that's quite fine. And then they start listening to themselves. They're like, I'm doing my part of integration. <laughs> um, I think I want to a little bit challenge this the idea that there is no cultural differences because huh? I have in my experience seen that Est like Russian speaking people in general are more extroverted more emotional, more, sure. in, uh, even the women, there is a definite aspect of, uh, you know, like, I, I mean, Estonian women are exceptionally beautiful and there is no doubt about that, but, but, but there is something about like Russian speaking women that they care really about their appearance and it really matters to them how they look. And I mean, uh, like, um, one of the funny things that I, saw recently was uh, you know margot robbie right she's a famous american uh, uh, actress she was oh, yeah, in yeah. Uh, wolf, yeah. wolf of wall street yeah and uh, there is this uh, comedian who was saying that he went to russia and he saw that margot robbie is like a four out of ten in russia because that's what majority of the women are like average russian woman looks like like margot robbie uh -huh. but that is just 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 a side thing uh, to explain but what i'm drawing on to is is that do you feel there are personality differences in uh, in both cultures introversion extroversion um maybe uh being emotional uh, a little bit more than uh, other maybe more accommodating mm -hmm. or not having like a like how difficult would it be for me to become part of like an Estonian like gang of friends than would it be for me to part of become like an Estonian Russian gang of friends mm -hmm. so this is something that I want to know because I have felt this difference like even in the the, the younger population as well okay. there is this 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 uh difference of personalities and i think it's uh, I, I think it's absolutely great because that's like it's it's great to have this uh, this difference in personalities because that's how like truly good things happen sure. so i would like to know your thoughts on that. 
Oh, good, good. Uh, I completely agree with you, actually. Uh, the things I thought before saying that we're quite similar, I mainly talk about worldview and kind of how do you see yourself in the world. Uh, so like, yeah, seeing a per like yourself as a person in the world, I guess this is becoming more and more similar. But of course, if you just kind of take those usual personal, uh, personal things that each of us has, uh, how emotional you are, how open you are to discussing the topics with other people, they're, they're the, the, the difference is there, sure. I feel myself also maybe that, at least at the beginning when I didn't got it, maybe because coming from this Russian bubble, I expected people to be a little bit more, maybe taking more initiative uh, uh, in, in the discussion. So I felt like maybe the discussions are not going well because I need to kind of push push the boundaries a lot, or like push, kind of push the discussion forward a lot in, with the Estonians. But with Russians, it's usually not the case. You just kind of throw a world and, and then, you know, discussion starts, starts on its own. So there's obviously more you need to kind of do to spark discussion between the Estonians on some topic. Uh, and you know, one is like this again, high level, like beginning, beginner's level, when you just they get you get answers on yes and no and if you really want to start a discussion then then you need to kind of have some time and uh know like first of all understand this person better understand this person more with estonians rather with russians they're completely okay to russian speaking estonians they're completely okay to just start the topic without all of those personal background that's that's the case uh, i i agree with you that one so there is a little bit more preparation needed if you want to spark a yeah I kind, I kind of uh, call it as a warming up people <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah so yeah because same way you go to the gym you need to warm yourselves up you go to estonia you need to warm people before you make friends with them so that's something yeah or you get them drunk then that's a lot easier my um, problem is I, 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 don't, I don't drink so that's so you so... don't drink at all yeah yeah so that's why it took me so yeah, that's uh, that's uh that's that's actually really great i think it's uh I think drinking has been proven to have no, like, like everything alcohol does is negative to your body. Like speaking from purely research perspective, like there is no benefit apart from like, uh, like a psychological high or, or like that, but, yeah, uh, but it's easier to speak and maybe that's, that's the case. And also it's yeah, yeah. Okay, in the winter, oh, I, I, I get it, but yeah, I'm, I agree with you on that one. That's, I think, I, I, I think we're, we're, we're reaching to like the closing and I start wrapping, I want to wrap up my, my questions and <laughs> one of the. What do you think, um, and I want to ask this question in two parts, mm -hmm. what do you think Russian speaking or people coming from predominantly Russian background in Estonia can learn from Estonian culture? What are some things that they can, and, and it's, uh, I'm asking it in a purely like objective sense. What are some things that we lack that we can learn from the other culture and mm -hmm. uh, i think that if you ask me this question as a pakistani who has uh, come to estonia i can list list like 20 different things that are could absolutely need in as as a pakistani person that i have learned from estonia and people and, and its culture so can you share something like that and the other part of this question would be the reverse as well. So what can Estonians learn from Estonian, Russian uh, people and their and their culture? So, well, yeah, let's let's start with the first part of the question. Uh, what uh, Russian speaking people learn from like uh, Estonian speaking people here in Estonia? And actually, I need to confess, I haven't seen all of your videos. Uh, but uh, I see and I really like this one when you when you actually talked about what uh, you find so valuable is in your culture and what what you took as uh, this may be a lesson and what you would like to uh, maybe propagate more uh, in that sense uh, and I really like one part of that being connected to the nature uh, I guess that's that's one of the things I also do it a lot so I kind of push myself uh, push my friends to to go to the to the to the hike. Uh, to spend the time outside, uh, but also yeah, with the Russian speakers, it's usually more kind of uh, chat, uh, and maybe kind of being with the nature, being with your own mind, on like alone in the nature and kind of calming down. Because in, in today's world, it's becoming extremely complicated 
if all of those uh, smartphones work being around you 24 seven, I can just grab my computer and start working right now. I couldn't do that 20 years ago. Uh, friends writing messages, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, right? So it's, it's extremely complicated for the brain and the brain actually overworks and then it starts working slower, or like not so, so efficiently. So being with the nature, being able to like plug, uh, plug off and just enjoy looking at the nature, just getting, getting yourself calm uh, by doing that, it's, it's one, of the, one of the main things. And being humble in general. I think uh, current world, we have like relief in the, in the world of ego because you can broadcast yourself uh, anywhere and you can broadcast yourself uh, really easily. Instagram, TikTok, once again, you just post your pictures and then that, that boasts your ego, you see the likes. And then you think that you're kind of greatest person in the world, and maybe that's a good feeling, but uh, as, as an experience shows, usually sometimes it comes to abrupt end and you, if you, you find yourself in, 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 in a bad place. So it's usually uh, much better to go in a world being a humble person. And that's, I mean, yes, a reminder for everyone. And as I said, Estonians are quite uh, humble people compared to, uh, even to Russian speaking Estonians and obviously just for Russians from Russia, who I see. Uh, that's about that. Uh, about, uh, yeah, R Russian speakers and what the students can take from them. Well, yeah, ideally, ideally, you can control your emotions a little bit better and you can turn ext extroversion off and on. Maybe that's not the case, but uh, ideally, that's sometimes you need to extrovert. Some sometimes you need to approach that girl. Sometimes you need to uh, start those discussions about startups. You're completely afraid. You don't know what will happen, right? But you can have, uh, I think, Russian speaking students do it a little bit easier. And uh, as I said, you can come to one and start discussing ideas without this warming up, without this knowing all of the background of the people. You can just, you even, you even don't, don't care. But you know that this person is really good kind of specialist in some particular area. They have an idea in this area. So you come to him or her, right? And then you start discussing that, bouncing up ideas, and had a great discussion, maybe you don't know even who, what's the what's his family name is. But you have this discussion, you've got this feedback, so now we can work on this idea. I guess that's also really important in today's work to have this kind of option to to just, just start. I, I really like what you said about, uh, for example, two examples you gave, like talking to a girl and giving a startup pitch as well. I like one of the things I get criticized a lot by my majority Estonians, and I, I, I totally take that criticism because I, I'm, I'm fine with it. Is that a lot of the things that people often do, they justify this as a part of a culture, but mm -hmm. sometimes they are not always the good things, right? Mm -hmm. So sure. if somebody says that you know, like Estonians are cold, they need a lot of warming up, uh, that's fine. That's that's okay, but. To say that this will that that this is a really good thing per, from personality wise for a person to be cold and uh, to be uh, unapproachable, um, from purely objective personality wise, regardless of whether you're Estonian or not, this is not a very good thing because you live more in a culture where you have to be able to to you know like break the ice of the other person and then get out of your shell as well, right? Like every like we, we live in such, such an open society and I really feel sad for all the guys who need like, like alcohol so that they should be able to talk to that girl because that like, that breaks my heart, like really much. Like, why are you not able to do that? Even if you're afraid, uh, even if you're like scared, mm -hmm. why do you need like a glass of alcohol to give you the courage to, to do, to do this, to do this kind of thing. And it's not, I mean, you shouldn't like say that it's culture. It's definitely not a maybe. Maybe it's culture, but it's definitely not a good part of the culture that that I feel. Yeah, maybe one, one, one really good thing that uh, I can tell, tell from for myself. Uh, I learned more or less to be an extrovert. I I've been an introvert as a, as a child. I mean, really, I haven't really talked to much people. I've sit in my room, and then at some point, I understood that that's not profiting my career, that's not profiting my life. So I really started engaging myself at the same way as, as, I, as I described how I start to kind of engage myself more in Estonian society, but consciously kind of pushing myself there. 
Uh, the same was also done with talking to people. I didn't like talking to people at all, but at some point it kind of became much more fun, uh, fun to do. So we actually can learn to be an extrovert. That exactly. I, I mean, some degree. Th this is so, so true because I went through the same journey myself as well. I mean, people are really surprised when I tell them that I'm introverted. I don't like talking to people, like talking to people like drains energy for them, but I still love talking to people as well. I, I want to talk to people. My ideal day is just me sitting on my couch and watching, watching YouTube. That's, that's, that's my ideal day. But I, I knew when I came to Estonia that I have to cultivate an extroverted personality. I have to like, uh, break down and, you know, like, uh, make a whole another one on that is extroverted that I can switch on if needed yes. to be, and then I can switch off and it takes energy. Of course, it's not your core personality. Right. But mm -hmm. I think this maybe maybe this is uh, this is this is changing as well as uh, as I see ahead, but I think yeah I think this is this is really really important because maybe if this was like thirty twenty years ago when Estonia was not part of like you know like the global economy and the world then it would have been totally fine that Estonians say, okay, you're quiet. We are like the forced people. We want to stay here. We don't, you know, like mingling with other people. But now Estonia wants the best people from abroad. Like as we were talking in the beginning, Estonia needs professionals. Estonia wants to share their expertise with the other countries as well. So if you want to be part of like a global country, then you have to start to cultivate this mindset. And it's, it's not even like a, changing your personality it's almost like becoming an entrepreneur right to the whole country becoming a sort of like an entrepreneur that we are we want to become part of the global economy we have this estonian side here that is preserved that is pristine we are like we're, we are not very approachable but if need be then we can be you know like uh, do do all these things as well and it's not a clash with our uh, without with our sure. culture. that's like a work in that sense because as i said there are usually not many Estonians around there so if you are from Estonia and you go abroad you're actually some sort of representative for your own country so you can take it as a work so you want the people to see your country in a better way so you want to kind of be more active you want to be proactive you want to share what you know about the world but you also have kind of learn this information because obviously, if you are the only Estonian, the, the person will see the world. Each time they will see Estonian news, they will directly connect with you, and that's how they will view the, the whole country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, so we're, we're wrapping up the the conversation. What is the future for you, from a, your personal standpoint, and overall, what are you? What are your plans? So that's a good question. I hope uh, I could answer that easily. Um, I guess I answered the main question for myself uh, while living in Germany. And the question was, as for many young people, uh, what, like, is in the long run, what, the, what is your place? And I know that my place is still here. So I'm really happy being back home. Uh, and if I'll get an option to leave abroad for a year or two or three, I will be completely okay to take it. Uh, but in the long run, I want to live here. Well, I want to die here in some sense. Uh, I want to have my children grow up here. So that's kind of the main answer that I've got. And it kind of made my life much more easier. So I was able to, I don't know, buy an apartment because, you know, if you stay, then you, you probably need to buy an apartment and not, not rent one. Uh, so that's, that's the main thing. Other than that, I hope I can be kind of a part of the change. I'm quite an optimist, I would say, because a lot of the things that discussed uh, or moving forward quite good. Uh, this connections between the Russian bubble and Estonian bubble are becoming more and more relevant. And I guess I could be a driving force to that as well on my part. Uh, I'm not ashamed of like talking to Estonians, not ashamed anymore of my Russian background. I just kind of deal with that. <laughs> and the same, the same, the same time, uh, talking to Russians, I bring all of kind of fun things from, from the learn from Estonians to them uh some places to go things to listen uh videos to watch on youtube and so what what, what whatsoever so i tr try to to be this mediator uh, professional wise i don't know actually as a, as i learned I, I quite like people so maybe I'll, I'll try i'll try also uh more mentoring and maybe some managerial positions whatever just to kind of give this this uh grow mindset to people 
from all of the backgrounds. Uh, okay, final question. I usually ask this question to all my Estonian uh, guests. What does being an Estonian mean to you? Who is an Estonian to you? Uh, and if you need clarification, I can I can bring that, but I would like to know what you think. Well, uh, being an Estonian. Well, there are a lot of things, uh, but there are... Like, who is an Estonian? What makes somebody an Estonian? Uh, there's a real, really good... Uh, because uh, yeah. I've asked this question... Like the the reason why this question came is I all sometimes I tell this background is that I was part of this debate that happened the English language debate the only English language debate before the elections in Estonia and there were like five party members sitting on the stage and I asked this question to them like what does being an Estonian mean to you okay and uh, like some of them said that you have to be an Estonian by ethnicity if your grandfather has Estonian blood you are an Estonian regardless of wherever you live. Yeah. Um, and according to the Estonian constitution as well, Estonia was formed for the purpose and preservation of Estonian language, culture, and its people. Mm -hmm. But that's where I sort of stumble myself a little bit is that what defines an Estonian? Who is an Estonian? Because Estonian citizen definition is quite easy, right? You fulfill this criteria, you become an Estonian citizen. But who is an Estonian? So, um, yeah, what do you think? And it's totally your individual definition because everybody I've talked to has given me different answers. So, even Estonians. Yeah, well, uh, well, that's that's an interesting question. That's that's a long one. Uh, but in general, like really quickly, I would say that's the person who speaks the language, uh, because uh, for Estonians, not for all countries in the world, but for Estonia in particular, the language is the kind of the main vessel for which the information is being shared and being kind of things that hold us together because the country is so small, the language is so small, uh, and it's really important to have this language because if you don't speak it, then uh, the next generation won't speak it and you don't need too much, I don't know, foreigners, worse, whatever changes uh, to get rid of one million people speaking one language. But also the person who sees his or her future in Estonia, uh, that's kind of maybe depends on a person, uh, but usually if you see your future in a country, you are also willing to contribute to this country in some sense. Uh, so that's kind of also there are two different types of foreigners. Once again, there are foreigners who come here to work and uh, to take the next opportunity in Germany and move abroad. And there are people who maybe come here for whatever reasons, but they see that they like this country, they see the future of this country. And that's like, well, we one group could and should be treated as the foreigners, while the other uh, can't become Estonians if they learn the language and if they will, will, will be able to communicate. So for me, that those are the, the mainly, mainly two things, that uh, you speak the language and you are uh, ready to contribute because you see your future in this country. That's a really, really good uh, definition. Um, all right. Thank you, Stephen. I had a really great time talking to you. I think, I think change can only happen through people like you who are who are from the both worlds and who know who who live on the edge or like the border, and that's where you see both sides, and that's where you see that mm -hmm. is exactly where yeah. any change in the world or any society like like truly happens so i'm really glad that that you're here and your and your thoughts and ideas and the clarity that you have about uh, about being an estonian and coming from fr from your own uh, like family and culture and uh, finding this clarity i think that is uh, that that is so, so great so thank you so much and uh, yeah maybe i'll see you in person sometime yeah, thank you, man. And I think you're doing great work as well, uh, introducing yeah. the, uh, the culture and introducing the country for foreigners. Uh, because you, in this case, if you talk about bottle bubbles, you could be the, the person who would be between the Estonian and the foreigner bubble and make make it easier for, for both sides. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I try to. Um, but okay, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, please put your comments down in down there and uh, let me know what you think and like share and subscribe and take care and uh, bye bye i'll see you in the next one thank you bye